Well, joining me earlier to dig deeper into the expectations for this year's UN General Assembly was Rajesh, excuse me, Rajesh Merchandani. He is the Chief Communications Officer at the United Nations Foundation. And I started by asking him about how the global community may be able to compel denuclearization in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, given the fact that Chairman Kim is not in New York. The UN, if you remember, is the preeminent global forum for peacemaking and peacekeeping through the Security Council and the General Assembly. Um, so these are issues that are at the forefront of the UN's mind. And we know that things like non-proliferation are big issues under discussion uh, this year, both in the Security Council at a meeting that will be chaired by President Trump, uh, and also at a major meeting at the UN, a high-level meeting at some point during this week uh, as well. So these issues are never far away from the agenda uh, at the UN. And you know, in terms of you know, global shifts, you know, we have seen what uh, the efforts, the overtures that uh, the Americans have made with the North Koreans in the past year. Uh, we're yet to see if they actually uh, achieve the stated aims. Um, but I think we're going to, uh, you know, see a continuation of debate around, you know, what is the best way to make sure that uh, nuclear weapons uh, are, are not propagated uh, any further uh, in the world. And that's certainly one of the core aims of the United Nations. Part of the dialogue around North Korea, or around the DPRK, is, um, is a conversation around economic development. Is there a role for the United Nations to play there? Well, the United Nations, apart from being the primary peacemaking and peacekeeping body in the world, is also the primary driver of economic development as well through the framework called the Sustainable Development Goals, the 17 goals that were agreed by all nations of the, of the UN, all 193 member states, back in 2015. And the, the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, as reflected here in the pin that I'm wearing, um, these underpin a lot of the conversations, almost all the conversations that take place here during general assembly week and the fact is as the secretary general antonio guterres has made very clear uh, we are not making enough progress towards implementation of the goals and achieving the goals the timeline of the goals is 15 years we are three years in and as if we as we have been hearing uh, all year from the secretary general and the deputy secretary general uh, the world is not moving far enough or fast enough to implement the goals one example is that after many years of declining hunger hunger is on the rise in the world for the first time uh, this year and that's very very worrying so you can be sure that there are many conversations going on here at the United Nations during General Assembly week which will be focusing on exactly how we can accelerate uh, action towards implementing and achieving the sustainable development goals and reversing some of those worrying trends on Iran of course this is the first UN General Assembly uh, since President Trump pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal the JCPOA as it's known more technically much of the rest of the world wants to stay in that deal uh, how much on the sidelines um, would you say that's going to be part of the conversation or either even part of the events that there are European entities in particular making their case in that respect? Uh, I think it's definitely been part of the conversations in the run-up, and those conversations will continue here now that world leaders are gathered for the General Assembly in the same place. We know that President Trump will chair a session of the Security Council uh, this week as well. Uh, there are a couple of questions over exactly what the subject matter of that conversation will be, but we understand non-proliferation will be one of those. We don't know whether Iran will be part of that conversation or not, but we are. We're, we're, it's pretty fair bet that um, the Iran deal will be something that is discussed both you know, in official sessions of the United Nations here and also in many of the, the, the bilateral meetings and the, and the side meetings that take place. That is many, one of the key reasons that many uh, member states send uh, key officials as well as world leaders here. Obviously, the U.S. and China are at a point with a very intense uh, tensions over trade. Uh, are there times in which, in your experience, you see countries uh, have that type of tension spill over into the foreign policy arena, or is it able to stay separate? Well, I mean, trade is, you know, e effectively a foreign policy issue, isn't it, really, if you think about, you know, the interrelations between nations. And so it's inevitable that, you know, when there are trade disputes and when countries are not agreeing on, uh, you know, trade, uh, and trade agreements, uh, then those are going to be talked about and discussed in heated circumstances in, in many fora around the world, whether it be at the UN General Assembly, whether it be in Europe, whether it be in many other places around the world. Uh, I have no doubt that um, 
Now, given that this is taking place at a time when there are difficulties between the two largest trading nations on the planet, uh, that those conversations will carry on and they'll bring in many other uh, member states as well because the whole world is dependent on trade.